could have stayed in my house. We would have figured it out. We took the easiest route. Snitch. Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. People telling, ratting, snitching. Cheese most size. You know the ones. You see them all over the news, all over the media. Everywhere you look on YouTube, there's somebody says somebody's a rat. Let me go ahead and tell you the facts of the matter. Penitentiary's packed full of rats. Everybody's got that one homeboy that knows that one guy that just got in trouble back to back. He ain't never take that trip. Why he ain't never take that trip? Why everybody? Why are they in the feds? Why, why are they in the state? Why you always come home? Why you ain't tell us about you getting pulled over and arrested last week? How'd you get out of jail? You ain't even called for bond. Everybody knows one. How you been arrested 25 times? 25 times with a court-appointed lawyer. Ain't got no money. And you just back out here. Just doing what you want to do. Let me tell you why. Because somebody else took your place. You traded cases. Traded faces. Why do 10 when you can give it to a friend, right? Yeah, like I said, the penitentiary's packed full of those guys. We're going to get into one of the biggest rats I ever came across and how things ended up ending for him. Now, let me get this straight. Let me make this clear to you. If you're out here and you're in these streets, you got to wear them. You have to wear what comes with it. You get caught with whatever. You don't get to tell them the plug. How does that make sense? He's doing the same thing you do, but you ain't built for this. Mm. You ain't ready to be around real dudes that are like that. Dudes that really did this. There's a difference between being in that life and being about that life. I met a lot of dudes that were really about that life. That felt no remorse. That if released, 100% would do it again. So why would you go tell on him and him and me and everybody, some people just can't help it. You ever heard the term tattletale? You know when you're growing up, that little dude that's a tattletale, that chick that's a tattletale, that always, mama, they run home and they tell, and you fast forward 15 years later, and they no longer run into mama, they're telling the police. A whole lot of tattletales. Some of these people just never grew out of it. Now, there's a lot of reasons. You know what? Let's just get into it. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So, let's relive it. Snitching. Telling on the next man. To get yourself out of trouble. Telling on the next man with the intent of getting him locked up. Telling on the next man for absolutely no reason. Telling on somebody with the hopes that the right people will hear it. Or telling the right people. And then watching that guy disappear. Eliminating your enemies. So you start ratting. Now I want to make this clear before we even get into this. Because this story revolves around a boy named Delicious. Not all of the boys tell. That's hands down not the case. I can't get on here and be like, man, the boys be telling. They tell on everybody. Do boys tell? Yes. What is a boy? Sissy, gump, punk. They got a lot of different names for the gay men inside of prison. The ones that identify as females, act like females, or take on the female role and still might have a mustache. What? Not all of them tell. I have to make that very clear. But with Delicious, it was way different. He's a dude that got knocked off with another dude that was... The man in them streets. Dude that had work. Dude that had all types of guns and all types of money, houses, cars. And, well, on the deal, mess with Delicious. And when they get popped, Delicious takes the ride for him. Now, Delicious cooperated. 100% everybody in there knew that Delicious told. Other dudes that knew the dude on the streets would come in and be like, man, he straight told him my homeboy. But there was so much. He had done so much for this dude. It was so wrapped up in that was going on it. He still had to take that trip. Even if it was only for a couple of years, he had done too much not to go to prison. Can't just say, well, yeah, he sells all that stuff. Do you sell it? Yeah, I do, but he, he makes... No, no, no. Do you sell it? I do. Did you spend the funds from it? I did. Did you acquire things, cars and, and guns and different things in life? I did. Oh, so you was in the game. But I'll tell you everything. Well, you still got to take a trip. He took a trip. They like to do this stuff in the buildings where they'll switch the pods up. They don't like you to get comfortable. They don't like guys to just be able to form alliances. And then every now and then you get a group of guys that will start extorting, robbing. So every now and then they'll just come in and grab a whole bunch of guys out this pod. And if they're causing trouble, you get moved to another pod. We're going to break y'all up, split y'all up, put y'all in different buildings, different units, whatever the case may be. We got to break this up. Y'all can't be getting comfortable. That's when we get delicious. Delicious, deliciousness. They just went by both names. Some dudes called him D. Some dudes called him Big D. Like... Wait a minute. Now I'm thinking back on that. 
Anyways, he comes in the pod with a whole bunch of guys. I'm not talking about a big move. You're talking 20, 25 inmates taken out of our pod, switched them between different spots of the prison, and well, wherever they go, they take those other inmates and put them in here. He came in in that group of guys. Now, when he first came in, dudes knew him. His reputation surpassed who he was. Dudes told you right off the gate, hey, D right there, delicious. Don't be talking around him. Don't tell him nothing. Don't let him see nothing. He would tell on you. When he's in the prison telling on people, that's what they say. But he told on old boy on the streets, got old boy sent away for a long, long time. And he ain't doing but a couple years. Like, everybody knows his case. Yeah, he tells. So right out the gate, my spider senses get to tingling. Anytime I would see D, deliciousness, delicious, whatever you want to call him. We're just going to call him D. Anytime I would see D, no matter what I was doing, I would change the pace of things. Never spoke to him, never planned on speaking to him, didn't want to be friends, didn't want him to know me. I just wanted to fly and eat the radar. But I'd be trying to tattoo somebody, and I'd be like, come on. I'd try to sneak him in the cell without the guard seeing him, and I'd see him look over, and I'd be like, skirt, stop, no, we're good inmates, we don't do that, no, sir, don't come, on. Don't come over here, D's looking at you. So you almost, you had the cops you had to get around, which are the guards, then you had the other inmates that are just nosy, that don't really pose a threat, but you don't want them in your business, but then you got this dude. This dude is watching everything that's going on. And at this point, he ain't told on nobody. Well, we had a unit manager, and I spoke about this unit manager before. We're going to speak about her again by the name of Carolyn Parker. Carolyn Parker was going to be the assistant warden at the prison. She worked her way all the way up the ladder. She smoked the longest cigarettes I've ever seen. Like, I don't, where did she get these cigarettes from? Like, these are like one, these cigarettes look like they was like this long. But anyways, that's besides the point. She kept a bunch of boys in her office. It would be irritating to the point you go up there and you'd have a legit something going on. Your toilet ain't flushing. Man, I ain't been to outside wreck. My number ain't working on the pay phone. Something that you have to go talk to this woman about. And she would have four, five, six, sometimes up as eight boys in her office. These dudes be hanging out, running copies of paperwork, filing paperwork, shredding paperwork, reading stuff off to her. And she'd be sitting back in the chair smoking that long-ass cigarette. D quickly made his way up the food chain. The other boys knew D, and I guess you could say their strength in numbers and why anybody would want to hang out with a rat, I don't know. But you knew that if you was on D's good side, you didn't have nothing to worry about. You didn't have to worry about nobody putting their hands on you. You didn't have to worry about nobody trying to pressure you or push up on you because, well, D's going to eliminate them and get them gone. D's in a cell with a short, fat black dude. Once the black dude out of a cell, D's a black dude as well. Black dude, black chick, whatever your pronoun is. But he wants the dude out of his cell so that he can get his man upstairs, move down into the cell. Dude tells him, I'm not moving. This is the first time D told on somebody. I'm not moving. Oh, you're going to move. No, I'm not moving. Oh, yeah, you're going to move. No, I'm not moving. We wake up in the middle of the night. We see the police hold the cell. They're searching the cell. Hey, cuff him up. Get him out of here. Now, what D did on this dude was dirty. He claims he didn't say nothing to the dude. But they go in the cell, they search, they find a weapon. That's automatic reason for transfer. And leaving that cell, you're leaving this prison, you're gone and details everybody. But I ain't telling that dude. And the only thing that saved him in this situation is nobody really rocked with that dude. He was kind of out there, didn't really mess with many people. So when he got locked up, dude was like, damn, that's crazy. How did he had a weapon? It was speculated that D put the weapon there and that it didn't ever belong to old boy to begin with. But if he had a weapon out of all these cells, 43 cells in his pod, the same day that him and D get to arguing about him moving, him saying he's not moving, they come in that night, search, find a weapon. This dude sleep when they come in the cell. D is awake. D comes out the cell, is standing there. Dude comes out, they put him in cuffs. They proceed to search, and they go right to where the weapon is. Because somebody told him, we can't prove it, but we know it was D. Later on that day, after they took that dude to the hole, D's boyfriend moves downstairs. Tall, crazy, old school dude that had been in the system a long time. So clearly, he stands on all these morals, these principles, these things he believes in. He's a convict. He ain't da 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 da. But he's shacked up with a whole entire snitch. And by now, everybody is talking. I mean, there ain't no way them people just picked that cell randomly, went in there, went right to the hide spot, found that knife, and took that man up out of there. And you're right, there was no way. Like I said, we could never prove it. But common sense tells you these two have an argument. Guards come in that night. They search a certain spot. They find a weapon. They take that dude out. Why they didn't take D? Could have been D's knife, right? Hmm. We fast forward. There's been several situations with D now. Him and another boy get into it and start having some words. They're coming in that evening. They're going to pack that boy up and take that boy up out of there. D had 
power. Oh, deliciousness had all the power a person could have when it comes to being in prison and not the kind of power that you want. I know people say, if you know he's snitching, why you ain't going to do nothing to him? Let me explain this to you. You know he's snitching. You know he'll tell on something. It's been proven he'll tell on something. So what happens when you go over there and put your hands on him? How far do you think he's going to take it? I'll tell you how far. You are going to see the magistrate. You're going back in front of the judge. You're going to get more time. And you're going to jail. Yes, you were in prison, but you're going to jail. They're going to take you, book you, refoto you, fingerprints the whole nine. And whatever sentence you did have, they're going to add some more on. So if you're going to do something to this man, you better make sure you ain't got nothing to lose. If you got a 10-year sentence, you go over there and you hit him with a piece of steel for telling on somebody. Now you're doing 25 years. Was it worth it? Hmm. A lot of dudes, it was more or less... As long as he ain't telling on me, don't know what I'm doing, I stay off his radar, I see him, hey, what's up? A lot of dudes do that, hey, what up, D? And they would do that, it was more like like the snitch version of Debo. They didn't do it because they was afraid of him doing anything. They did it because they was afraid of him telling on him. So they would play nice with him. But once that dude got in that pod, in the months to come, the whole pod changed. Diva walked out there. Man, this floor is dirty. Why y'all be throwing stuff? Look how disgusting the microwave is. Somebody needs to clean up in here. I ain't playing this. I'm not living. Y'all are trifling. And sure enough, somebody would come along with a broom to sweep the floor. Because they didn't want D telling on them. Now, up until the first real incident, like I said, we could only speculate that he was telling on people. From the moment he came in there, people started getting locked up. All of us had to move different. I said it. If you ain't going to put your hands on him, you ain't willing to do more time behind putting your hands on him. What are you going to do? Now, this dude would act super hard. If you got to argue with somebody, dude would tell him quick, what's up, then? What you trying to do? What you trying to do? But if it didn't go to blows right then and there, nine times out of ten, they were coming to pack you up later that night. He would disappear, go upstairs, talk with Miss Carolyn Parker, talk to the lieutenant, the sergeant, shift commander, whoever was on that night, and you was getting moved. If you didn't go to the hole, you was going to a whole entire other building where you didn't see D no more. But D and his man get into it. Old head I told you about. I know his name, but I'm not going to put him out there. They get into it one night, get to arguing and cell, and the old man puts hands on D. Now, we're waiting. We hear him yelling, screaming, arguing. This is like a whole entire domestic disturbance going on inside this cell with a grown man and another grown man that's got a soft-spoken voice like a woman. All of a sudden, you hear the <laughs> of hands being put on somebody. And then you hear D yelling, help me, help me, and runs over to the door, sticks his arm outside, the waving for the guard. Guard comes over to the loudspeaker. What's the problem? I need the police in here. I need the guards in here. He put his hands on me. I say what? Doesn't take long. Two, three guards come in. They pop the cell. D comes out immediately, but he wants to act right right now. Put your hands on me again. The guard grab him, pull him back. He's telling him, he put his hands on me, punched me, hit me, slapped me. Yeah, he and they take old head up out of there. Now dudes just feel some type of way because they rock with this dude. This dude's been locked up longer than a lot of these dudes been alive. So when they leave up out of there, dude start yelling down, hey, D, you a bitch for that. You a whole entire hole for that. You a snitch for that. And you know what D does? Who said that? Who said it? Say it to my face. Don't hide behind the door and say it. Who said it? Dudes are scared to say anything. Some of these dudes are doing crazy amounts of time, but they're comfortable. They're what we call dug in. They might got money on the yard. They got moves being made. They might have a phone. There's a lot of different things going on that just getting tricked up behind what D just did. Could cost you. So dudes let it die down, but D ain't let it die down. He's still let the door run his mouth. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. All y'all do is talk. That's all any of y'all do is talk, talk, talk. Don't none of y'all wanna do nothing. Y'all ain't gonna put y'all's hands on me. I wish y'all would. And you hear somebody yell out, why? So you could tell on him? <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? By now, D's done figured out a couple of the guys are yelling stuff at him. And the first thing in the morning, they call stand by for child. We come out, we go stand by the front of the pod, and D tells the officer, is Carolyn Parker here yet? Yeah, she's upstairs. Let me out. I'm not letting you out. Call upstairs and tell Carolyn Parker I need to talk to her. Officer gets on the walk to talk, calls up. Carolyn Parker says, let him out. He goes upstairs, and we go to breakfast. We come back from breakfast, and there's officers in the pod. The same guys that were making them comments talking about you a bitch for that. You a hoe for that. You a snitch with being locked up. You got what we call the cart. It's a big brown cart. They put your property in, your clothes, your TV, any of the other stuff you may own, your commissary. They bag all your stuff up and put it in this cart. They take you to the hole and your stuff gets locked in a cage and property, which is a place where they store everything. And you come out the hole, you take a brown cart, you go over there, get it, and you go to your new cell. D's not told on a whole rack of dudes in here. They're locking dudes up everywhere. And me and my cellmate are just standing there watching, and they got us all locked down as they come in and lock all these different dudes up for threatening D. Here's the icing on the cake. 
I'm sure dudes had intentions of getting at him. Some of these dudes he told on were gang members. Some of these dudes he told on had been down a long time. And they felt some type of way. We got a rat in the pile. We got a dude that's going to get you locked up if you have any type of situation. And then here, if you have a situation, you fight behind him. You don't go tell him nobody. Where they do that at? That ain't how D got down. He's a tattletale. Right when we think he can't get no worse, the door over. Shh, clang. And in walks Carolyn Parker. And she makes her announcement. Guys are talking, guys are yelling, why, you, why are they taking him to the hole? Da, da, da. She tells everybody, shut up. This was a woman that would walk into a room full of killers, a room full of the worst men, and shut them down with the stupidest of things. I'll take the TV. I'll shut the phones off. You don't want to be the guy that gets the phone shut off so the guys can't call their loved ones. They're going to want to do something to you. So guys, get quiet. Ain't going to be no threats made in my building. Ain't going to be all that violence. I'm over here now. And if anybody does anything to, she says his name, y'all going to see me. And I promise you, you're going to get shipped up off here. And I'm going to put you somewhere where it's 23 and 1 and you don't come out but one hour a day. Y'all better not do nothing to him. He's doing what I asked him to do. What? So in other words, you got this man in here looking for anybody that's got any type of resistance or that don't agree with him telling on people. As long as he lets you know who they are and what we're doing and what everybody else is doing here, you're going to stand behind him? 100% huh. true story. She leaves up out of there. D's at the door. The officers finish packing these dudes up. It takes an hour, hour and a half before they're done rolling everybody's stuff up and getting them up out of there. D comes back to the door. Anybody else got something to say? Anybody got something to say? It gets quiet in there. You can hear dudes in their cell talking and Little noises coming from TV, but for the most part, nobody's saying nothing. Because they already know if they say something, they're going to turn right back around, come in and, and lock you up. We come out later that day, we go back to our regularly scheduled program. Everybody's talking amongst themselves. But if you're talking, you look over and see him looking at you while you're talking, you just kind of, hey, D's looking at us, man. Don't say nothing. You play it off. Don't look at it. Don't make eye contact with him. Man. You're straight turn to stone. You go into the hole. A couple days goes by, and a bunch of the boys ain't feeling D. They're not feeling the fact that, that D's done told on certain people and other people and people they rock with and that they know at any given moment if they get into it with him, they could get locked up. So when he would try to make small talk and he'd be up in Carolyn Parker's office trying to talk to him, dudes would talk, but they're not really trying to carry no conversation. They're not entertaining it. They're not bringing up things. They're not talking about things. So now D feels some type of way. He's in his feelings because dudes are treating him different as they should. So now he's got to figure out a way to start trouble with them. Well, they go out in the yard and they get to arguing back and forth. And a couple of boys tell him, we ain't rocking with you like that. Like you telling on people, you might tell on us. The moment we get into it, you ain't going to keep us solid. You're just going to run and tell Carolyn Parker. And he says, y'all be telling too. No, we don't be telling. You be telling. You can speculate. We tell. But we know 100% you tell. D gets to run in his mouth and they commence trying to jump D. What does D do? D does this thing where he backs up, back pedals, throws his hands up, starts throwing like these girl punches and then takes off running. Straight over to the officer. They open the gate, let D out, and now the boys are standing there knowing they're going to the hole. But to make a long story short, these guys come inside the building. Now they done locked up two, three of the boys behind D. Now dudes are big mad. Now he's made enemies with dudes that are pretty much in love with these guys that don't care much about going back to court. They don't care anything about a new case. They have life without parole or life with parole, but because of the serious nature of their charge, they ain't never going home. And you just took the one thing away from them that they had. That boy, mama, daddy, brother, sister, your kids, a lot of them have disappeared over a 20, 30 year span of you being in prison and you ain't got much, but you got that boy. And now these the reason that boy's not there no more. Now these boys lived in different parts of that building we lived in. They ain't living in our pod. Dudes really be on some sucker shit when it comes to prison. Rather than handling the situation they should, a lot of dudes just wanted to die down. They're only worried about themselves, about the $100 worth of commissary that's owed to them from here and owed to them from there, about the little bit of weed and a little bit of whatever they might have floating around in the air that they're selling and being able to send money home. They let morals go right by, right out the window. The whole don't snitch thing no longer exists until they get their money. Once I get my money, y'all can do whatever y'all want to them, but y'all can't do nothing. We get inside the pod, and there's dudes in there that want to hurt him. They just watched him tell on some more people on the yard. He just told on these people last week. He just got old boy locked up. He got the boy before him. Like, this dude is getting people locked up left and right. Like, he's guaranteed to be one of the biggest snitches that ever hit that prison. 
But dudes are advocating. Nah, nah, nah. Y'all can't do nothing to him. Y'all can't look, man. Y'all need to listen, man. We got a good thing going here. We got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff in the works. Like, if y'all do anything to him, they going to come in. They going to lock us down. We're going to. They're more or less going to back for the snitch. All behind a couple of dollars. Now, you got dudes that ain't feeling this. What good is it to have all this stuff to sell if you can't sell it? If old boy sees you slump nodding, he's going to go drop a note or he's going to tell the people on you. If old boy sees you do a hand-to-hand -hand with somebody, he's going to drop a note to tell the people on you. So it don't really make sense. Y'all trying to keep him around while y'all get money, but at the same time, you can't get money because he's around. So you got different dudes that's been down a long time going to this dude sell. Hey, man, look, you can't be telling on people. Or you got to pipe that down. Like, you making things hostile. Hey, dudes want to get at you. Look, I'm going to keep them up off you. You just got to chill out, man. Like, you can't be doing it like that or they going to get you up out of here. I ain't going nowhere. This boy don't even like the reason. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to do what I do. I ain't here forever like y'all. I'm going to do my little bit of time. I'm going to go home. I ain't got but seven, eight months left and I'm out of here. Look, man, whatever. We're just trying to keep it peaceful in here. You doing too much. Dudes really, really want to do something bad to you, man. You getting dudes homeboys locked up. You getting dudes boys locked up. Like, you disturbing the way that things go. What you gonna no, look? I ain't, I ain't call me Bennett. I ain't, and I ain't gonna do nothing to you. I'm just trying to keep you out of harm's way. So D somewhat agrees. All right, all right, I'm gonna calm down. But y'all better tell everybody like I'm not playing, man. I'm just trying to do my time and go home. For some reason, people want to keep messing with me, talking about me, running their mouth about me. I ain't the one. He's still playing this gangster role, even though it's known to everybody. You came to prison for being a snitch. You started snitching as soon as you got into prison. And to date, there's no telling how many dudes you really got locked up. We do know it's a lot so far, but we can't. They do that thing where they switch the building up again. Details, Carolyn Parker, we don't know this, but we can pretty much assume D was the reason they did it. They wouldn't switch us up that often, but they would. But right after this whole situation takes place with D telling them the boys at the yard and them trying to jump him, it ain't long after that. They come and they do a boom, switch up and move a whole bunch of dudes out of here again. And they come up out that hoodie. Some dudes just don't heed warning. With us getting all these new guys and now all these guys, even the guys that advocated for them, some of them guys got moved too. We get all these new guys in here, dudes, let them know. Hey, he got y'all moved down here. Yeah, he disturbed the peace. Disturbing the peace. He's the one that got you pulled from point A to point B and all people put in your cell and everything switched up. Leave dude alone. So when we get all these, when all these guys get moved around, we get this new guy in the pot. Wasn't on the cell tree. Every man has got his downfall. And D's was that he liked to, he liked to puff on tree. So no sooner he gets in there, the air gets funky. He starts spreading love, starts selling this person, selling that person. We being out in the middle of the pod, you can smell it in the air. We be on lockdown, you can smell it coming out the cells. He's got plenty of treat, and he's passing around. He's getting money. That's D's downfall. D likes to get funky. D likes to smoke. So D pushes up on dude. Hey, I know you got it. What's up? Share the love. Da, 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 da. And dude tells him, man, I ain't got nothing. You know he's going to get in his feelings. What you mean you ain't got it? I seen such and such and such. Why are you watching my moves, man? Why are you watching what I do? Look, I'm just trying to say, when I mean, the other dudes in here, I was getting it from him. My money's good. Let me, man, I'm not messing with you. He turns the dude down. He gets all in his feelings. No sooner he leaves his cell, walk across the pot, run his mouth. Oh, y'all want to act funny now. I can't do this. I can't do that. Y'all said y'all want to keep the peace, but y'all going to, he's in his feelings. Other dudes go over there and tell him, whatever you got, you need to get rid of. You need to pass it off. Don't let him see who you talk to. Whatever you got to do, get it gone. Because he's going to tell on you. Well, this dude's GD. We didn't have a lot of GDs in this part at the time. We didn't have a lot of GDs in this prison. So he gets up with his homeboys, all the other GDs squad up. And while they're all squatted up, he passes it out. Wouldn't be long after that. They come in, they tear his cell up. They don't find anything. They find an abnormal amount of commissary because he's El Plaga. He's the plug. He's El Jefe. But they don't find nothing in the cell. And they leave on out. One comes out of the cell. Hey, what's up, bitch? You told on me? That's what you do? You run and tell the police on people? Man, ain't nobody worried about y'all. By now, the old lifers that got boys that, that got told on, they got put up out of here, should have been the ones to get at him. If he got one of your homeboys locked up, you should have been the one to get at him. But as of now, nobody's moved on him. But these GD dudes are looking like they about to do something to him. Now, I forgot to tell y'all this. They done moved his cell. When he first came in, he was towards the back. Carolyn Parkinson had his cell. He done moved all the way up to the front so the officer can see him at all given moments, at all given times, so he feels safe. 
So he's standing in his doorway running his mouth. What y'all trying to do then? What y'all going to do? I ain't told nothing, but I can. I'm going to take care of mine. I'm going to defend me. Y'all ain't about to do nothing to me up here. Now dudes are coming down the tier. He's standing in his door. The guard in the booth sees him, sees the guys coming down the tier, sees all of them arguing. Guys on the bottom tier coming up the steps. D goes inside the cell and shuts the button. So now the dudes are outside the cell running the mouse. Officer yells, everybody locked down. Officers come in, go to these different dudes' cell, trying to figure out what's going on. They all saying it ain't nothing. D's up there telling them, nah, they ready to jump me because I told on the weed dude. Yeah, that's what happened. I told on him. We don't need that in here. People going to get hurt. He's lying. You mad because he wouldn't give you none. You mad because you can't get funky like the rest of the dudes in here. So you told. But now you're trying to make it seem like you're trying to get him out of here because he's just bad for prison. Like prison is not a bad place. Carolyn Parker comes in later that day. We stayed on lock that day. She comes in and tells us, I'm taking the phones. I'm turning the fans off. I'm turning the TVs off in the pod. Y'all on lock until further notice. Dudes come to the door and start screaming, ah, da, da, da. They're more or less making a fuss about the situation. But nobody's addressing D. We're probably two, three days in on this lockdown. D's got the power to move around the prison. D comes out, mops, sweeps, does different things. They start popping doors to let the dudes that work inside the pod come out and clean up. We've been in the cell throwing the trays out, splashing water out, slinging juice out, rotten fruit, potatoes. You name it, we're throwing it out the cell because we're tired of being in the cell. Well, they let these dudes out the cell to come clean up. They pop D's door and let him come out the cell to clean up. He's walking around like shit sweet. One of the dudes that cleans up in here is GD. D's pushing the broom across the floor. Dude's mopping the floor. And out of nowhere, take, dude takes the mop handle. Turns around with the mop still on it and slaps D upside the head. Fuck! You see the metal part hit D in the side of the head and the rest of the mop sling all the way around. D tries to pull around, trying to figure out what's going on. Dude brings it down. Wham! Thor hammers him in top of the head. Goes commence a whooping D's ass. D's trying to get up and run around, but the floor's been mopped. So D starts slipping. Mounts him, gets on top of him, and commences to putting that pound game on him. Fong, fong, fong. Beats D up right in front of the control booth. The officer's inside the booth, banging on the glass. She's calling codes, trying to get the people down here. It's too late. Dude's on him. Dude gets up off of him. D gets up with his knots all over his face. Slips on the floor, falls again, gets up. Now D's at the control booth telling him, you seen what happened? You seen him attack me? I want to press charges. Let me upstairs so I can talk to Carolyn Parker. At this point in the day, it's about 4 5 o'clock. Upstairs ain't locked down. The other three pods in the building ain't locked down. But everybody knows we're locked down. This officer lets him out the pod. He comes out. You got all these dudes coming down the staircase from upstairs going down the chow. Scary ass staircase. This place where you get robbed, you get stabbed, you get jumped. I've done stories on the staircase. But if you live upstairs, you got to come down that staircase to get out the building to go to chow. D tries to make his way up the staircase and he's going past this group of guys. One of them reach out his D. Pow! Sends him back down the staircase unconscious. Dude step over top of D. Carol Parker's waiting for D to come upstairs. Now this whole pod has been let out and go over to the chow hall. Carol Parker comes downstairs, comes in the pod. And we don't know at this point he's been attacked the second time. Where's such and such at? I sent him upstairs. Well, he ain't never make it upstairs. She's making a calling out his name, making a scene. Hey, no, 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 I let him out. He left. He ain't in here. She goes out, finds him at the bottom of the staircase. Sleep. Slept. Laid out cold. Wake up. Who hit you? I, I don't know who hit me. What happened? I was coming up the staircase. Kayla Parker says, send back 300 pods. Send 300 pods to y'all and back to the building. They're still eating. I don't care. Pack them up and send them back to the building. She sends them all back to the building. A lot of these dudes ain't even ate yet. We'll feed you in the cells. Send everybody back. This is the power one dude had. This is how valuable he was. Enough that this would mess up. You got to think there's 86 men in a pod. But because one man out of those 86 had enough nuts to step up and knock D out, she sent all 86 back and locked that pod down. So now you got us locked down. You got that pod locked down. You got officers down here locking old boy up and slapped him upside head with the mop, beat him up in the middle of the pod. Now you got one dude out of all 86 of those men that caught him in a stairwell, slumped him, sent him down to the bottom. I'm all locked up. They would end up shipping D. They got D up off that prison. He could not last at that prison. It was just too violent. And they sent him to a lower level prison where it's more known for telling, where dudes are, are more acceptable to it. And just like that, he was gone. The most beautiful part of all this is what dudes had to say after it all took place. Man, I was just about to hit. I was going to bang him up. I was just waiting for me to get my money. I had talked to him, tried to play nice with him. I was going to hit him up. Everybody had these different stories on what they was going to do.
but nobody did it. See, D fell in in the right time. D fell in when they were changing laws in Virginia, where they come in and they was going to do this and do that. And guys that never had a chance of going home, all of a sudden had a chance of going home. So dudes were looking at it like, do I just get at him because this is prison, he's telling on people, or do I just wait for my parole hearing and if I get turned down, I'm going to get at him. The clock was ticking as far as D goes. Somebody was going to get at D. D wasn't no dummy, though. The dumbest thing he did was in that moment of getting beat up with that mop and ground and pounded in the pod was going up that staircase when there was other inmates coming down. Carolyn Parker set him up for failure, had him feeling like he was untouchable. All he had to do was get up two flights of steps. He made it up the first set. Now he had to get up two more flights of steps to get to that floor where Carolyn Parker was at. And she was going to take care of everything. But before she could, OD found himself in a rat trap. Somebody dealt with him. They shipped him up off there, got him gone. And all was good in the kingdom once again. As I said, that was a crazy time in my bed. I, there was times in my bed where you were even suspected, suspected of being a rat. Somebody was going to do something real bad to you. Didn't even have to be nothing to do with them. But yeah, D would get shipped to another prison, finish off his last few months, and go on home. And I'm sure when he got back to the neighborhood, people was like, damn, the boy is back. Hey, hey, the boy is back. Y'all better get in the house and stop hustling. Yeah, he, Y'all ain't seen him just pull up with his mom in the car. Oh, y'all going to jail. Get in the house. That's who D was. Rat bastard. Just in doing this story, I thought of a whole lot of situations of dudes ratting and getting hurt really, really bad. And it was crazy that D's situation lasted as long as it did. It was crazy that he told them the boys and their men didn't do anything to him. It was really crazy that when he went to go tell them that GD dude, they didn't just mob on him and get on him right then and there before he could shut that cell door. But things work out the way they're supposed to work out. My advice to y'all. First of all, don't commit crimes. If you ain't doing nothing wrong, you ain't got to worry about the D's of the world telling on you. And secondly, if you're going to commit crimes, be willing to wear what comes with it. If you're dead wrong and they catch you doing something, ask for a lawyer. Don't say anything else and let the lawyer take care of it. That's why they're in place. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And if you're going to tell, well, be willing to wear what comes with it. But anyways, it is now Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I got a lot to do. Wanted to get this video done and out to y'all. 2024 is upon us. It's coming up fast. Christmas is coming up fast. And I got to go make some moves. But anyways, these jails, these prisons, these penitentiaries, these boys that like to tell. The hardest crazy world inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Oh, you're not entertained. And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.